I finally finished the Japan vlog video. Ironic because I thought I was going to upload this one first, but then I ended up uploading the, the Japan haul instead. It was because that one ended up being easier to edit and I thought, oh, maybe I just won't upload the vlog. In the comments, you guys were like, oh, can you show your vlog? So yeah, I ended up making that. Not me wearing the same hoodie in both videos. I think it's just a comfy hoodie to work in. Ashley designed this one. This is like my third rendition of it, I think. And I'm making a fourth one. This one says I'm potato. The other one said work from home. And then my latest one is gonna have no text. I don't know, I'm experimenting. So if you haven't seen the Japan haul, that one goes into the details of all the stuff that we bought from a designer and artist point of view. If you don't know who I am, I'm Ange, also known as Pikarar. I studied industrial graphic design. Yeah, Calcifer? Come here. Casper's camera shy. Come here. Yeah. I guess Casper is just gonna sit there. I've been a full-time UX designer for the last seven-ish years, but then I quit and now I'm doing art full-time. I make digital prints, stationery, apparel, home goods. I go to trade shows. I write books. I forget to talk about the How to Draw Cute series books, but I wrote like six of those. So I took this Japan trip with my husband and we're both designers slash illustrators. So the trip is very much all the things that artists would indulge in. So I hope this trip inspires anyone who has a related background or is interested in art i will say we aren't the most like touristy people we're down to just chill and go to maybe more low-key spots we love food so i think all the places we went to i would highly recommend we did go to some big spots like arashiyama tokyo labs so yeah i don't talk specifically about the stuff we buy just because that's in a different video but these are all the places that we went and you can find those items there Oh, also Haverdash sent me this box. This is a big box. They sent me a box of a bunch of clothes that I can try on. It's a pretty cool rental wardrobe program. Not really my color, but I wanted to try it. I feel like it's very different from this one. Like it's much more saturated. Basically, you can try unlimited clothing options without having to pay for every item you try on. It's a monthly subscription with free shipping. You don't have to pay for the items unless you want to buy them. And if you do buy them, you can get them at 40% off from retail price. The whole idea is that you can keep your wardrobe fresh without having to clutter it. It's cool because you can rotate the items from your wardrobe without having to commit to anything. So I got like eight pieces in here. Some of them I picked, some of them I had foam pick for me. You can experiment with your style. There's hundreds of styles to pick from. There's a bunch of brands that you can go off of. Every time you don't want an item, you can actually return it. The label is already paid for. They give you a slip and you just put it back in this poly bag. And then they'll send you new items based on the wish list that you have. Have. Actually, the moment that you click return, they'll send you an item immediately. You don't even have to send it back yet, but yeah, the moment you hit return, they'll actually send you another one. If you sign up through my link, you can actually get a 30-day free trial. It's pretty cool. You can easily cancel it at any time. I actually have my own closet. Thanks, Haverdash. If you do end up wanting to subscribe long term, you can get unlimited rentals with free shipping both ways. Also, you help me out. I can continue making videos and making art. Okay, let me try on some of these styles for you guys and you can see what I picked. A lot of the items I picked, I don't know if I necessarily would wear them, but I just wanted to try them. And that's the beauty of this program. There's this guy. It's giving urban outfitters kind of hipster. I don't know if I like the material though, so it's not the softest. This one is from express this one's probably a return so into the poly bag you go Ooh, this one Tom picked i'm pretty sure he picked this one it's a long dress spaghetti straps and it has an open back oh the open back is very cute i like this one the other cool thing is you can actually keep the pieces for as long as you want. So if I didn't want to return this one, but I also didn't want to buy it, I could just keep it forever for as long as your subscription is. I'll probably pick this one. It's also a black dress. Kind of cute. It's very date night. I'll think about this one. It's a little shorter above the knees. Here's another piece. I assume Fong got this one. It's like a sleeping dress. And then you got this black top. Looks very 
date night as well. Silky feel to it. All right, enough of clothing. Let's get to the Japan vlog. Funny story, our flight was actually delayed by a day because someone on the plane got drunk and started biting the flight attendants. We had to wait for that person to be detained before we could board the plane. <laughs> we have arrived. I brought a friend. <laughs> We landed in Tokyo, but our first day was actually in Kyoto. So we had to take a bullet train and when we arrived there, we ended up just opting to walk to the hotel instead of taking a bus just to take in the scenery. But also, I think our last bus already left. The place we stayed at was a Ryokan, which is a traditional Japanese hotel that also has a public bath. The one that we got, super nice. It was a private bath. The bed was super comfy. The bathroom had heated floors. Breakfast was included. This is probably our favorite part of the trip. We talk about this all the time. We think about this all the time. 10 out of 10 would go back. They had an upstairs chill out area. All of the drinks are complimentary, which is crazy to me. Like, these are really nice. Or are they just cheap and I don't know that? Breakfast that was served was traditional, the ochazuke. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Shy boy. <laughs> We're getting breakfast. It is an assorted platter with protein, pickled veggies, there's a side of soup. You eat the rice with green tea or fish broth. Personally, I don't like mushy food, so I had the tea separately. It was so good that we went home and Fum actually made me some for my birthday. Baby's first bus stop. <laughs> On the first day, we went to the Kyoto Craft Museum. If you're into little knickknacks, into handmade goods, they had all sorts of things from wood, weapons, textiles, paper goods, and everything there is handcrafted. I'm gonna show you how it's done. I think my favorite part of it all is that they show the process for these items. We also had on hand sketchbooks that we kept close to us. We stamped in them throughout the trip because Japan has a lot of stamp stations. Overall for this trip, we ended up just walking everywhere and just exploring via bus. Having like a general area or neighborhood that we wanted to go to, but not like a specific <laughs> agenda. Oh, it's so cute! This was a cool leather shop. We got a bag and some wallets. Everything's handmade. We went to the big shopping street, Kawaramachi Dori. I hope I didn't butcher that. We also went to Nishiki Market, which has a lot of alleyway shopping malls and a lot of street food. This is Koei Donuts. They have special donuts like sesame and matcha flavors. I think we went a little too ham and bought too many. Very country. This doesn't taste like heavy matcha. <laughs> we also did a couple of stationary runs. Look at all the stationary. We went to the Hobonichi flagship store. Next door, there was a little cute gallery where an artist did felted needle poking. I think that's what it's called. We didn't know there was a Pokemon Center, so we also went there and got a couple of stuff. We were gonna get pasta, but we were too tired, so we ended up opting for this katsu place that was nearby, but also very good. It felt like a really long day of just walking, so it felt good to go back to the Ryokan and just have a nice spa night. Since the trip was cut short because of our delayed flight, we only had two days in Kyoto. On the last day, we went to Arashiyama. You take a bus that pretty much goes straight from the city to the mountains.
This is probably one of my favorite places in the world. I love nature, so just being close to the mountains makes me really happy. The last time I went, I took a bike and went around the entire area. I also fed the monkeys, but this time, Fom and I walked around the bamboo forest, we walked around the neighborhoods, went down the shopping alleys, got some snacks and little souvenirs for friends. There's two really cute stores, the Rilakkuma one and the Miffy one. The Kyoto trip felt too short, but we did have to go to Tokyo just because we already booked the hotels. Pro tip when traveling is that hotels can actually ship your luggage directly to your next destination, so you should opt in for that service just because it's easier to travel with only a light backpack and you won't inconvenience anyone by having large luggage around you. Here is me working on my book while we take the bullet train. We got to Tokyo at night and the first thing we did was get Wagyu. It was so good, it melted in our mouths. The only thing is, Fom and I don't eat that much, so we regretted getting the all you can eat because we were definitely so full by the time we got to the mid part of the meal. We're at 7 Eleven, and I got a salmon mommy with all the sandwiches. Should I try it? Ooh, yeah, try it. I like egg salad too. The next day, we went to a miniature museum called Small World. Honestly, I was just expecting a room. Tokyo goes all out on their exhibits. There's two here. We found him. Yeah. Well, I look for the yellow. They all have like a yellow thing next to them. <gasps> look at him go! Can you go? Without spoiling too much for anyone who wants to go, my favorite part of the exhibition was the airport and airplane section. If you stay long enough, you can actually see the entire exhibit change from daytime to nighttime. There also was an Evangelion exhibit. That's something I still need to finish. There was also a behind the scenes workshop on how they make everything. Around that area, you can also go shopping. So we went to Aqua City and got some blind boxes from Pop Mart. We got super lucky and actually got the special edition toy from the Y2K Azura collection. You have like a 1 in 144 chance of getting it, so luck was on our side. Across the street is another mall where we went to go to the Doraemon department store. Are you happy, honey? I am happy. <laughs> He never takes pictures this much. There's the giant Gundam. We walked around the area just taking in the nice views and then headed back to Ginza area. Then we went to Sutaya in Ginza. It's a designer and art lifestyle bookstore. There's all types of categories of art that you can think of. We probably spent the most time in all of the Sutaya stores. I think we checked out like three different locations across Tokyo. If you watch my Japan haul video, most of our stuff is from the bookstores and I give a detailed view on all of them. The next day, we went to a fishing restaurant. A couple of people recommended this to us. I think this is probably something that Fom and I wouldn't do again. It felt very touristy. They were singing and shouting every time someone got a fish, and I think we were much more low-key, so although we did enjoy the meal, we kind of just wanted a more chill and relaxed environment. It's a fun experience though if you're into fishing or into, I guess, catching your own meal. Then we started heading towards Akihabara and we stumbled upon the small store owned by one artist. At Akihabara, we didn't have an agenda, but this is like Anime Hub Central, so we just went to every other store that we saw. We looked at all the books, all the arcades, all the toys. We ended up buying Pokemon trading cards. We bought a box of the shiny treasure EX cards. Our first time buying like Pokemon cards because we don't really collect them, but these ones have some good cards. And we just prayed 
for the card gods. We want Pikachu or the trainer card. I think the trainer card is slim. Pikachu is pretty slim too. Yes, that's nice. That is pretty. Look at the look at the backing. It's really the cool. Japanese it's different from when I grew up. What is this? Ditto. Oh, it's Ditto. Look at Ditto. Ditto. Cool. It's a, it's like that sword one. Oh, oh this, this is one of the baby rares. I think baby rare is just S, it's just S, like it's just rare. So it's rare? It's a rare card. Can I just rip it? <gasps> Whoa! Whoa, we got Pidgeotto. Or is that Pidget? Pidget. Pikachu. Okay. Oh, Pikachu. Alright, we're down to our last four. Yeah. So we, we hope. Gardevoir. Gardevoir. Whoa. <gasps> Whoa. I think this one's like not super super. Ah! <laughs> I think it's like every every box is guaranteed to have like a whatever that is. It's Statue of Liberty Charizard. This card actually ended up being $350 and current day, I think it's worth $100, which is the most expensive item within this pack. Uh, oh, we got the Sparkly Tendermel. Yeah, different. it's different. Yeah. Whoa, I like this one. I think that's Noivern. This one's always cool. Oh, we oh. got another one. We got a... It's a shiny. It's the other, yeah, the shiny one. Blue. <laughs> Drift Moon. Alright, last one's you. We get another box. Just kidding. <laughs> Done. Done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Done. Done. We didn't get it. No Pikachu, <laughs> no Ayano. Let's go back to Akihabara and sell them. <laughs> We tried to get udon today, but the line is like two blocks long. We done goof. So here we are. On this day, we went to Harajuku and decided to just go shopping for clothes. I don't think we specifically found anything this day, and we discovered that thrift stores in Japan are very expensive. They're targeted towards designer clothes, exclusive items. I think we were just looking for hidden gems that didn't necessarily have to be designer items, but this area was still really nice to walk around and look. We walked down Takashita Street, and I specifically went to the Alta shopping mall just because there is an artist that I really like, and they they have gotcha pond figures here. <gasps> it went the other way. This is where all of our luck oh. ran out. Uh, it's, a, it's a green one. This one? It's this one. No, it's not this one. <gasps> Duplicate. We got. God, we have bad luck today. Okay, okay, we, got okay we got him. Now we leave. <laughs> this is actually one of the nicer ones that we've been to. Like, we actually like the toys here. Alright. We are praying to the gotcha guys. <laughs> the glasses girl. Continues to. He's not leaving. You're trying your luck again. <laughs> I'm gonna get hungry. It's so easy. Hungry, hungry, hungry. I see yellow. I got tuxedo Sam, I think, which is not bad. Save this one. It's shippo size. You like it? For him? Yeah. Oh, it locks. Tuxedo Sam. He's cute. He is cute. It would have been cute to get hungry all. 25% chance to get pom pom. Pom pom? Right here. We get pom pom. Easy. I got my melody. <laughs> you know, 
You lose some, you lose them all. Uh -oh. Are you getting more? Okay, I, mean, I think, okay. I think, keep going until you get a dupe. Oh my god. Keep going until you get a dupe. Okay, I like, I like the way you think. Tour of the Magic Finest. Oh. I don't think, I don't think the ball matters. You got that smart. Uh, thank you. Chat, is this real? I, I can't see it. Two dupes now? Are we risking it for the biscuit? <sighs> I don't know. You should have bought Hangyo at the store. Oh, oh, oh. It's not him. Wait, is there a pom pom in there? Actually, no. I'm not sure who this is. Hangyo! Oh, it is him! It's because the blue what? with the oh. green made it yellow. Color theory. Okay, we, got, we have to go now. We have to go. You want magnets? <laughs> We started heading towards Shibuya Crossing and we got Toro for lunch, which is tuna. This place is so good and super affordable. We were really surprised. We also got dessert down the street. It's a little hidden underground. You have to take some couple stairs down. And then we started walking up Cat Street. It's a really quaint and cute shopping area. Also has a lot of thrift stores with designer items, but I just genuinely enjoyed walking through this area. And then we ended up at Omo Tesando where I got a bag oh. and we got some clothes. The next day, we went back to Koto City, which is where Tokyo Labs is. This is a museum with a lot of mixed media. You have installations with lights, with music, with sensory, like a very Instagrammable and interactive place. I think overall, it's not something that Fum and I super enjoy anymore. I used to study this type of art, but I think I've grown to like more hands-on, crafty illustration and design. So yes, this was fun. It was pretty to look at, but we probably wouldn't go again. For lunch, we ended up going back to the central city. We went to Curry Bondi, which was so good. Kind of a small space, so there might be a wait. Around this area is also Jimbocho, which is a book neighborhood. So a lot of stores there will have vintage books, trade and sell books. There's also a stationery store that we stopped by, Boom Podo. We got stickers, Posco markers, and tissue holders. We felt ambitious, so we traveled down to Daikanyama, where we went to the really nice Sutaya, and there was also a thrift store where we got these really cute tea sets. And then at the end of the day, we headed back to Ginza for food. Korean food because the sushi line was closed. The next day, we went to Skiji Market. This is one of those places that I think about all the time when I'm back in the States. It's a fish market and the fish there is just so fresh. The oysters, the clams, all the seafood, the street food is just so accessible and so cheap. I also love the ice cream that they have there. Oddly, I couldn't find a lot of black sesame ice cream places on this trip, but this is one of those places that are always guaranteed to have it. Along the outer market, there's also ceramic places, so we got a couple of things here for a kitchen. We then headed over to Gapabashi area, which is a street for all kitchen things, and continue to buy more ceramics. Look how much ceramics I bought. Little things. Bigger things. the hall maybe next video we've been waiting for two hours oh. 
一包二倍。On our last day in Tokyo, we took it easy by going back to Shibuya and just walking around to window shop. We went to the department store with the Pokemon Center and the Nintendo Tokyo. It also has other designer toys in this mall. And up the lower floors is a huge food court where we got the most amazing ramen. <laughs> Fum got a truffle ramen that was really good. I just wanted to eat his versus mine, which was the classic shoyu ramen. Oh, actually I forgot, on our very very last day, we went to get a massage, and then we went back to the hotel to pack all our stuff, and headed to the airport to have lunch. We came here with two backpacks, and we're leaving with all this stuff. We made it through TSA. Dad, Dadzy? I don't care about him. But he's a dad. He's the last one. I gotta do it. I gotta do it slow. Like Giovanni. Lucario. Lucario. Some guy. It's Pikachu. It's big. Oh. It was a flop. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>